uh, right now we are going to focus on what has come out of that hearing that was much anticipated um, we're gonna tell you all about uh, what has happened in Guyana uh, the opposition's take we hear from Gail Teixeira executive member of the PPP uh, PPPC I believe uh, good morning Ms. Teixeira good morning. how are you doing this week <laughs> being challenged in Guyana but thank you very much for having me again and on your program and good morning to Barbados yes we are happy to have you. We like to get those updates for ourselves and for our audience. So coming out of yesterday's high court hearing, what can you tell us this morning? Well, the high court ruling yesterday was, uh, I mean, it was expected, but look forward to it at the same time. The Chief Justice ruled very in a very well presented and very carefully uh, presented ruling that a major number, uh, she made a number of major points which are critical. Um, the applicant, the APNU representative who went to the court, asked for 28 reliefs to basically, basically stop the, the Ghana Elections Commission from declaring the results of the recount and uh, preventing them from doing so. And to you go back to fraudulent reports that all the international community and the opposition parties had declared were unusable, and that's why we ended up in the recount in the first place. So the Chief Justice uh, based her rulings on the rulings previously of the Court of Appeal and the, Ch the Caribbean Court of Justice on July 8th. And so there were three fundamental things that came out of the ruling, and that is that the recount order was valid. The recount results must be used for the declaration of the final results of the March 2nd elections. Therefore, preventing the chief elections officer who has on four occasions, and I think on the program last week I said that, on four occasions he had disobeyed and refused to comply with the chairman of the elections commission request for the results based on the recount. And the third issue she raised, which was also important, is that the chief elections officer must follow the instructions of the Ghana Elections Commission, that he was yes. a functional authority and not a constitutional one. The constitutional body was the Elections Commission headed by the chairman and had a constitutional mandate, but he did not have one. Um, thereby, the court therefore brought an, an end to the impasse that had existed between the chairman and the Elections Commission. She also ruled um, res judicata on, on all the issues that these had previously been dealt with in the previous courts of the Court of Appeal and the Caribbean Court of Justice. And so, I mean, one of the important points she made as she was concluded, she lamented the fact that persons had approached the court on pre these same matters. In fact, paragraphs in the, in the presentations, the applications, um, in the case on March the 16th to, count the rec uh, to stop the recount, the uh, submission of June the 18th to uh, prevent the GCOM chairman from moving on the recount and the uh, right. recent case of July the 16th that um, she lamented the fact and said this was abuse of the court, of the court's time. And therefore, you know, they were same parties were part of all of uh, two of the three of the um, submissions, the applications, so that it's a major ruling that she's come forward with. Unfortunately, um, the general secretary and campaign manager of the APNU AFC coalition, Mr. Joe Harmon, um, has uh, announced yesterday, and it was said in the court as well by the lawyers for the APNU, that they would be going to the Court of Appeal today. So we're still wow. on this uh, treadmill. What we, what I call a treacherous roller coaster for the last 141 days. So it appears as if we're going to be back sometime today. Wow. What could that mean for you? I thought, I was thinking, you know, that this, this signaled a moving forward and getting to, to getting down to business really of government and governance. Yes. 
I mean, clearly the, the judiciary in Guyana um, and the Caribbean Court of Justice have been absolutely clear on what is required, what's the constitution, what the laws are, and making it very clear that if there are any doubts or uh, challenges or regularities that have to be dealt with an election petition that the Ghana Elections Commission nor the court at this stage with no declaration cannot invalidate or uh, remove people from, from uh, their votes from the declaration. And so despite that, the, the Granger-led government is continuing to try to thwart the will of the Guyanese people. You know, this is unprecedented. Uh, we cannot find, and there is no case in the world where uh, a parliamentary democracy, even in a dictatorship, that anything like this has mm -hmm. happened, that people are waiting 141 days. I think Guinness Book of Records has said that they have been inundated <laughs> by people bringing this to their attention. Wow. And that um, they're waiting for the results before they put it in the Guinness Book of Records. I mean, I'm laughing about it because in Guyana we have to survive. It's 141 days and we have to stay mm -hmm. positive. I mean, we know, we know that we have won. The People's Progressive Party Civic has won and we have the support of the entire world. The Secretary General of the United Nations, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, the Secretary General of the Organization of American States, the European Union, uh, the former uh, Chair of CARICOM, your Prime Minister, and now the present Chair, Dr. Ralph Gonzales. The card is sent to the elders governments of Brazil and Norway, um, United States, Canada, um, Botswana, for example, have all come forward. 133 countries have called on the Grange-led government to concede that they lost the elections and stop trying to, to, to prevent the declaration of the results so that an illegitimate government can be installed. And so we're very positive that we will succeed. Um, the issue is how long this will take because obviously if they go to the Court of Appeal, um, there's also the chance that we end back, we as Guyana, end back at the Caribbean Court of Justice, which would wow. be really a tragedy and a travesty. And, and you know, as Guyanese, we, we are embarrassed by all this. Our, our international image has been damaged terribly by what is going on. Um, and we're embarrassed by it as a people, even though we're not responsible for this, that our dignity as a people, yeah. uh, you know, is, uh, is, is being thrown out the window. And, and I must say, too, the economic situation is getting worse. You know, we haven't had a budget. Um, the last budget debate was December 2018 uh, for the year 2019. It is now the seventh month of the year. We're almost finished. There's no budget. Um, no parliament since uh, December 21st, 2018. And so we're really in um, a very delicate and potentially dangerous situation. Okay. Now, it's it's uh, for those of you who may have missed it, of course, this would have been something that would have, the, yes. the Chief Justice has ruled against that. Um, and uh, the, you know, the Caribbean Court of Justice is supposed to be our highest appellate court and it's supposed to you know, be the final say, but as you've pointed out, here you are still with this situation. There are so many questions I still want to ask. What's next? Do you see the possibility of any uh, civil unrest on the grounds? Um, but um, there, there's so much. Um, we give you an opportunity to, to make that quick comment. The first, to go back to the case quickly, and that is that the the Chief Justice has basically thrown out everything that was asked for by the applicant and referred back to the Chief, the Caribbean Court of Justice, so that we're very clear that she has, has put her foot down on this. In relation to our people, um, we've been, our people have been extraordinary. Everybody has commented on the level of discipline and um, patience, extraordinary patience that we've exercised, particularly at this time with COVID-19. We, we believe very strongly that, that the government has basically is desperate. It's running out of options, at least legal options. And that, um, we believe that, that, that we're righteous. 
the people, that the will of the people of Ghana is a righteous one and that we voted and we voted at a transparent and fair election commented by everyone, including President Granger. And so yeah. it is a matter of time. It is a matter of time, but uh, in the end, uh, every attempt to thwart the will of the people will be overcome. We're confident on that. And I think that is what is sustaining our people to breathe um, and to just let the process go through. Let the uh, It will end. It will end. It must end. And uh, at this point, at least for us on the opposition and all the democratic forces who are waiting for the declaration, we are not involved in any civil action or violence whatsoever or it is really the APNU supporters who've been having protests, one of which was so terrible uh, that was commented on internationally, where they had a protest with the coffin, with the chairman, an uh, effigy of the chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission, where they stomped on it and uh, claimed to have uh, over officiated at her funeral. And so uh, that mm -hmm. they have been the responsible ones for this terrible attack on the chairman of GCOM and also um, the ambassadors and anybody actually who criticizes this. Okay. I just, uh, I just want to thank things? the public people. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. You were... No, okay. I just wanted to thank I... then uh, the Barbadian people for and your government for taking a very principled position on Guyana. We really appreciate that. Okay. Once this situation gets sorted, I mean, you don't know what it is, but based on the ruling by the High Court, what are some of the things that you uh, believe would be critical for putting in place by the PPPC? I mean, the first thing is we have to get the results and we have to get our president sworn in and to be able to establish a government. In our manifesto, we've made a number of commitments and we have, as a party in government, have uh, implemented many of those commitments we've made wherever we have not succeeded in some cases to complete them. But our commitments to inclusivity, which is what our constitution calls for, for uh, the removal of discrimination, which has been a part of the Granger-led government, that we are people of many ethnic groups and there is place for all of us. There is spatial opportunities in Guyana for all of us. There is no uh, one ethnic group that is superior to another. And so one is the issue of uh, governance issues that are critical of the manner in which we govern, which we have made commitments to ensure that people, the equality and, and anti-discrimination uh, procedures are in place. And also, of course, um, issues of writing the economy, which is in really terrible state. Because if we can't do that, we don't have money to reduce poverty and to be able to provide jobs for our people. 30,000 people mm -hmm. lost their jobs in the last five years. So we have an enormous amount of work to do, enormous. Um, you know, in 92, when we won after the first free and fair elections, this was a collapsed country, it was a collapsed economy. I regret to say as a politician who has been around for a rather a long time, that I regret after all these years uh, in 2020, we're almost back at the same state of our country as it was in 1992. We have to reconstruct, we have to rebuild, and we have to build trust and confidence of our people in the institutions uh, that exist in our country because those have really been undermined. All right. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with us. And uh, we hope that uh, everything, a resolution, a, a true and final resolution can uh, be, be met uh, very, very soon in the, in the very near future. Uh, so I hope things go well today. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Mr. Thank Hera. You. Thank you very much. And morning, Barbados. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. I love that. All right, Gail Tejera is executive member of the PPPC, and she was updating us on the High Court ruling issued yesterday in Guyana, but clearly pointing out that this, um, as after that, uh, the, the opposition, of course, uh, who still, I should say, the still incumbent, seem to be heading uh, back to the court. So we will see what is happening as we go through the day. You can stay tuned to us here on CBC TV8. 
we will indeed keep you updated. So right now we're going to take a break and then we're going to get between the pages of a good book. Tell you what's up with the author. Morning, morning, morning. 